Now, this uh, Fees Must Fall movement says the recent 8% fee hike announcement could lead to protest action next year. It's anticipated that students will intensify their fight for free higher education in their lifetime. And most notably, the registration process next year is uh, likely to be worst affected. And on the debate, we ask whether this uh, has been an opportunistic move from this uh, management or whether these fees were unavoidable. Joining us in studio is Hendrik uh, Makaneta. He is the spokesperson for higher education and Transformation Network. Hendrik, thanks so much for your time. And on the line we'll also have Kisinze, or Kifinze rather, um, Kari from WITS uh, SRC. Let's start, uh, Hendrik, just looking at the WITS University, their decision. This was, of course, announced by Higher Education Department to say universities may increase up to 8%. Is it opportunistic, in your view, to go for the highest uh, uh, threshold? Yeah, our, our view as the network is that, yes, uh, it is opportunistic. We, we, you know, the minister did not say people must uh, increase or institutions must focus primarily on 8%. He said that that is the capped uh, percentage. And we thought that uh, VETS would be reasonable, especially given the nature and character of the protests that we saw, uh, you know, immediately after the announcement by the minister. So we really think that uh, you know, this uh, decision needs to be reviewed. Uh, Are they not within their right, though, considering that government to higher education had facilitated this process and gave the option uh, between zero and eight percent increase that vets are uh, in, it, you know, it's their prerogative to go anywhere within that ambit? Yeah, but, but of course, uh, in, in as much as they have the right to, to decide, one of the main uh, points that we're looking at is uh, consultation broader consultation with uh, you know the student community uh, you have already seen uh, the SRC does not fully agree with uh, the decision that was taken if you look at the composition of the people who sat in the finco together with the, the the council they are the majority the students are underrepresented and uh, you know these are issues that affect students and they would like to hear more voices uh, coming from, from, from students as well. So you're saying that you're not adequately supported or you're outnumbered by the various uh, academic bodies and of its management primarily uh, and, and the and government in a sense because, you know, students have argued that government can infuse more money in the system for, for black students to access or poor black students to access uh, education at WITS. Yeah, look, our worry is that uh, you'll recall that uh, when the minister made this announcement, he took into cognizance the plight of the, the poor students as well as the, the missing million. But we, we, we feel that in the long run, it is going to affect them. Remember that the missing middle are still going to rely on loans. Uh, you know, as and when they graduate or start working, these uh, uh, fee increments are going to affect them in, in the long run. And uh, that is why we are saying that uh, uh, this decision by VETS need to be reviewed. Uh, 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 let us come back and sit together with uh, all stakeholders to make sure that we, we at least uh, you know, listen to a wide range of uh, voices from students particularly. Yeah. Have you had access to scrutinize the financial model of its university in comparison to, say, former Bantustan universities like Fort Hare, uh, TUT, and uh, the Northwest as well, as to why VITS continuously cries, you know, poverty, saying that even with the hike, they're going to have a deficit of 56.5 million rand and that they cannot compromise the quality of the prestigious university at the risk of just having more students amass uh, coming to, to this university. Where are they spending their money? Do you think there's room to, to trim the fat, as it were? Well, uh, our view is that uh, Vets University, it's uh, unlike compared to historically uh, black institutions, it, it can be correct. Uh, you know, historically black institutions still receive, uh, you know, less in as far as the Vets as well as the, the University of Pretoria and others are concerned. Uh, even recently now, there's a model that uh, the Department of Higher Education is coming with wherein they've selected about six uh, universities. If you check those universities, amongst them is the, the University of Pretoria, where, you know, they'll be funding specific uh, uh, fields of study. And uh, we are saying that uh, 
a, a vets university also must find a way because they are the ones who have got a very good working relationship with the private sector. The private sector invests a lot in uh, institutions such, such as VET uh, as compared to a uh, university of Venda, for instance. Uh, yeah, but Henrik, I think if you don't know the numbers, then it becomes problematic. We'll take the response of VITS management, by the way, who were invited for this discussion. Uh, we, you know, we can go with whatever it is that they say, unless we, we compare where the money is being spent. VITS is saying it's due to the insourcing that they have to transform. It has to do with international lectures that they can't avoid having uh, on an annual basis, the, uh, the stationery, etc., which is also imported. So unless you know you have a trail of where the money goes, we can't uh, argue that there is wasteful expenditure? Well, I, I'm not necessarily looking at wasteful expenditure per se, but I'm saying that the, the increment that VETS is coming with should not be at the ex expense of the majority of our students who are already uh, struggling. This, uh, you know, the problem that we have is that our institutions, particularly VETS, if you look at Professor Habib, uh, these are not uh, uh, individuals who have got the, you know, the, the love the, of the students at heart. They don't necessarily look at the broader interest of students. They are worried about, uh, you know, the institution itself and, the, you, know, you, you know, they don't really believe in, in, in broader consultation. That is mm -hmm. our view. That is why we, we have called even initially that perhaps at some point we need to find a way of ensuring that we appoint our vice chancellors in a, in a different way mm. because the manner in which, in which it is currently done, it, it, it can't be correct. Yeah, but you need to move one step further because these, the stalemate has been consistent uh, since the fees must fall movement. You know, a little bit of progress is made and then we, we regress mm. uh, to essential um, antagonistic uh, environment. So the general meeting that Vitz had proposed, there was the intervention, the Ministerial uh, Committee on Education, the Education, the Hotla, etc. Do you think all of these uh, processes were fruitless? Not necessarily. Uh, a lot of work has been done, and there are institutions which, uh, you know, came up with a different approach as compared to, to, to VETS. So all, all that we are saying is that, uh, you know, let them come back to the drawing board to, to, to listen to the broader uh, voices of students and, and ensure that you don't necessarily stick with the, 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 the final or the, the maximum cap that the minister suggested. Mm. Now when you're saying that uh, you know the former Bantu uh, or black universities that haven't increased their fees who are generally receiving less uh, subsidies as compared to the likes of VITS and UCT etc uh, that VITS could ap adopt a, a similar financial model to how these other institutions are running is that correct? Uh, perhaps you should rephrase it. Uh, I did not. I'm saying that the whether your... Vets can adopt the model that Forte and the Northwest University are doing by not increasing fees. Well, uh, 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 look, uh, you know, we from the beginning we we never wanted uh, any fee increments. But when the minister spoke about the Miss Middle, the plight of the Miss Middle as well as the poor, it was understandable. But we we, we thought that you know, vets would find a way of, of, of actually moving towards the, the, the middle, or, or, you know, between zero and eight, not necessarily to, to, to go up front and, and emerge with the maximum amount uh, of increment. All right, That's so what happens said. next in terms of your uh, reaction or review on this particular case? Well, uh, as the network will be Right into the university, uh, I think that we will have to meet with uh, Prof. Habib together with the management of the university to try and, and sit down together with the students to see what kind of solutions can we come up with given the nature. Because our biggest worry is that in January, again, we may not have a very fruitful uh, 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 engagement in as far as registration is concerned. We might see, uh, uh, you know, protests escalating again uh, in a much bigger scale than even before. Yeah, but is it Unless, your view that VITS can afford not to increase fees for 2017? In other words, have a zero fees, fee increase? Of course. Uh, it, it is our view that uh, VETS University can afford not to increase. It has always been our view. Institutions such, such as uh, VETS University, the University of Pretoria, we have said it even historically that uh, some of them can even uh, 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 manage to survive 
for the next couple of years without government intervention. Because they, they, although I know they are not going to agree or come up, there are reserves that they've been you know, saving for quite a number of years. So yes, they can survive without increasing uh, uh, their fees. All right.